The journey into John Berger's way of seeing was met with a flutter of excitement and awareness on my part. I was excited to dig into Berger's analysis of art and society, which had captivated so many people, but I was also prepared for the book to force me to confront some unsettling realities and question some of my preconceived notions. It hit me. First, like a bolt of lightning when he asserts that images are not neutral or objective, but are instead imbued with meaning by the societies that produce them. I suddenly realized that my understanding of the world around me was shaped not just by my perceptions, but also by the social and cultural context in which I lived. Art before was seen as the exclusive domain of the elite. Paintings and sculptures were commissioned by wealthy patrons and displayed in grand galleries and museums, reinforcing the notion that art was something to be admired and revered by a select few. However, with the invention of camera, everything has changed. Suddenly, images could be reproduced quickly and easily, and art was no longer confined to the walls of galleries and museums. Photographs can now be circulated widely without cost, making art accessible to a broader public. In the past, artists were praised for their ability to capture reality on canvas. However, ever since the development of photography, this role in art has become obsolete. The camera had advanced to the point where it could take pictures that were more true to life than anything a painter or sculptor could create. As a result, artists began to explore new forms of expression, moving away from the traditional, representational art and towards more abstract and conceptual forms. This shift towards abstraction and conceptualism was a way for artists to assert their creativity and originality and to distinguish themselves from the camera, which was seen as a merely a tool for recording reality. Berger's analysis of the camera effect on the art world prompted me to consider the ways in which technology affects our perception of art, even now, in a world saturated with digital images and virtual realities. What is the role of physical art and tangible objects? And how do we navigate the ever-changing landscape of art and technology?